I reckon that deep down bassists, we just want to plug in and get playing. We love our technology, we love our sounds, but sometimes we can be bogged down by knob twiddling and pressing buttons and trying to remember how we got a great sound the last week and it doesn't sound the same this week. What if we could have a central hub where we could program our sounds for instant recall, whether or not it be in a recording session or, or live on stage or even just practicing at home? I think Super Pre here has probably got us covered. Hi, it's Dan Veal here once again, and you are watching Bass Gear Magazine. In this review, we are looking at the brand new Bergantino Super Pre. This is a digitally controlled preamplifier. It has a multitude of uses. We can have it down next to our feet on stage, or we can stand mount it and use it as a controller that we can reach by hand, or indeed on the desktop in our studio, we can feed our bases into this and get a great sound straight to our digital audio workstation. We're gonna look at some of the finer details and have a listen to some of the sounds that the Super Pre is capable of producing. What we have essentially on the front of the device here is four foot switches and a set of controller knobs that allow us to access some of the on-screen menus and then some controls for level. On the left hand side here we have our input gain you'd expect to find on any normal amplifier and also the master volume output. Next to that we have LEDs for overload and clip and these will flicker every time we get a little bit of peaking in different parts of the circuit. If we can keep those away from flickering, then we know that we've got enough headroom and we can get a great sound, clean, undistorted from our instrument out to our amplifier or the front of house PA system. Each of the first three foot switches here allow us to access one of three saved memory scenes. There's actually four to play with. We have one, which is our default setting, and then when we press each of these foot switches, we then enable another memory position. There's no delay when we press these when we're playing, so we get an instant access to a new saved sound. On the far right-hand side here, we have a mute button, which also engages our tuner. And that shuts off the sound so I can tune silently without upsetting the audience or anyone else on stage. In the middle, we have a great OLED screen here, which is nice and bright and it's contrasting. So we're very, very likely to be able to see this on stage in front of us. 
and we have four knobs that allow us to access each of the settings on screen. At the moment, we have a four band equalizer. Now, the thing I really like about the Bergantino Super Pre, and this is also echoed on the B amp by Bergantino, is that the equalizer on board is a parametric equalizer. Now, we see often on amplifiers, the mid control will have a frequency selector. And I think that's good. That's a good place to start. But you know what? I want more control. And on Super Pre, we can access all of the four bands and set the frequency individually. And I can save these settings per scene. Incidentally, if I need more than four scenes, well, I've got these bank buttons here that allow me to move the memory up into a new bank where I can have another three scenes and I can go up into another bank and have another three scenes. This is especially useful if I'm using different instruments or if I'm using different amplification or different recording scenarios and I want a whole wide range of different sounds programmed into the device. Whilst we're on the subject of scenes and saving, in the program menu, I can even name each of my scenes. So this is very, very useful. I could even name each one by song name, for example. I just dialed in a sound there that I could immediately use on stage. Nice bit of fat low end with a sparkling top end. And I know that I could switch between finger style or maybe slap style and I've got a really good clean sound. Let's have a look at what I've just set up. EQ wise, you can see that on screen, but I've also engaged the programmable bright control. In most amplifiers, we have a button that we can press in or out and we'll get some extra bright sparkle. But what if we could set exactly how much of that bright sparkle we had, but also the center frequency for that bright peak? Well, on Super Pre, you can do that. But that's not all because hidden away in our menu, we also have a high pass and a low pass filter on board the device, which is great because I can scoop away any low end subs I don't need or that could spoil the sound on stage. And I have applied a high pass filter at 40 Hertz. But also if I wanted to round off the top end and almost take away the top end sparkle, which is very, very useful when using distortion, I've also got a low pass filter on the device as well. Currently I left that switched off. Over the page, we have an onboard compressor. There's actually two modes for this compressor. This variable ratio compressor has a serial mode and my favorite, a parallel mode. In parallel mode, the compressed signal is mixed back with the direct signal. And this is something known as New York style compression or parallel compression. This is something that you'll need to have a look into yourself to find out if it's something that you could find useful. But suffice to say, what it helps to do is lift up some of my quieter sounds, but leave a lot of the transients intact. In serial mode, that's the same as a standard serial compressor, a pedal, for example, where your top end transients are also limited. In the next menu, I have this switched off. We're gonna have a listen to this in just a moment. We have a drive section, which offers overdrive, distortion, or fuzz. In the next menu, things get a little bit geeky, and this is where you're gonna to wanna to reach for the manual. Certainly, there's a lot of information to be shared here, so I'm gonna try and keep it as simple as possible. Within the drive section, we have the ability to band pass exactly where the distortion sits. I might not want it to interfere with the low end of my bass guitar, but at the same token, I might not actually want it to be too much in the top end either. So I can really dial in exactly where that distortion sits in my bass sound. Furthermore, far right hand side here, we can actually blend 
how much of the drive is actually coming into the signal as well. You don't see that level of control on your standard distortion pedal. And this is one of the big sells for me. I need to be able to sculpt my bass sound very specifically. Yes, I'm fairly fussy, and this absolutely nails my needs. And there you have it, layers of filth. In the menu, I have engaged the low pass filter. What this has allowed me to do is roll off the top end as if I'm miking up a speaker cabinet that doesn't have a tweeter. This is ideal because actually I'm running straight into my digital audio workstation and I'm not miking up an amplifier. So being able to mimic the way that a speaker cabinet rolls off my top end, I can be able to drive lots and lots of distortion without getting a fizzy, harsh and brittle top end, which then needs to be tamed elsewhere. I can do it all in the box here. In that example, I wanted to demonstrate how clean and clear the compressor stays even when it's absolutely maxed out. This was in the serial mode. In that little excerpt, I slapped the bass quite hard, but also in the finger style, genuinely I was playing pretty lightly, especially as we went up the dusty end north of the border. Those notes rang out nice and clearly at the same volume as my slap bass. But to my ear, the slap bass did not sound choked. What a really musical and useful onboard compressor. Within the menu, we have a lot of features. One of them, for example, is that we can set the overall output levels of the device to help configure if we're plugging straight into, for example, a power amplifier or our backline amplifier, or in this case, I'm sending this out to my recording device. EQ centers are set in this menu as well. And you can see at the moment, I have my centers set for 60 Hertz, 250 Hertz, one kilohertz, and then four kilohertz. As I mentioned earlier on, the bright filter can also be adjusted. And this one is centered at seven kilohertz. And I can use a controller to set the center frequency for that bright control. In the profile select menu, things get very interesting indeed. With the release of the Bergantino B amp, owners of Bergantino cabinets could pair the amplifier with the cabinet and using some additional DSP filtering could get the two to configure more tightly together in the same way, for example, as DSP is used with active PA systems. This technology has carried over from the B-Amp into SuperPre, and this allows us to select any of the speaker profiles that we used with the B-Amp also in SuperPre. You can think of these as a style of pre-shape, but rather than having one pre-shape button on the front of your amplifier, you can scroll through different ones on the device, but also you can download more from the Bergantino website. Here's what my bass sounds like on the previous sound setting with no profile selected.
Switching over, this is a vintage speaker cabinet preset. And this setting is ideal for use with the NXT 112 cabinet. For those who own the brand new Series 2 ref cabinets, there's even a speaker profile for those. And this one goes with the single 15 inch cabinet. Within that menu, without going into too much detail and wasting too much time in the video explaining it, we have a whole host of other options, including switching the phase of the output signal. We can even set the input impedance up to 10 mega ohms. This is fantastic if you're using an instrument with uh, passive piezo pickups on board. We need that high impedance to make sure that we can get the clarity from your pickup into the preamp and we can select that. The onboard effects loop is also switchable, so if I have a signal chain that I want to bypass completely as part of a patch, I can do that at the press of a button. Let's round it up then. SuperPre uses top tier digital signal processing to create an absolutely fantastic sounding signal path for us bassists. Should we use it on stage for private practice or for recording sessions or indeed part of an in-ear monitoring setup? I think this has nailed it. Yes, digital sometimes sounds a little bit scary but as you saw in my review here, a couple of tweaks of some controls and I've got a great sounding output. I absolutely recommend that you go and try one of these for yourself. And certainly if you need something which will allow your own backline to become a bit more flexible, then I think this is gonna be the device for you. Drive, compression, EQ, effects loop, speaker profiles, wireless control from an external foot switch. I think really we've got so many features here. It's gonna keep you busy, but also once it's set up and you've got your sounds saved, it's gonna save so much time as well. This one is staying with me. In fact, I've got some gigs lined up and that is where this is going. Thank you ever so much for checking out the review. This one's a great one. I'm going to put some more information and tell you a bit more about SuperPre in the magazine column. So go over and check that out too. For now though, I've been Dan Veal. Thanks ever so much for watching. And this has been the Bergantino SuperPre and you've been watching Base Gear magazine.